Happy Monday morning, everybody. All right. Well, I just lost internet and I had to get on the phone with Spectrum and reboot everything. And so I'm getting a little bit of a late start this morning. So I was like, oh, if I lose internet for the day, then how am I going to announce the winner? And I want to keep my word. You know what I'm saying? So I was a little stressed out. This morning on my menu, I had Beliefer Pink Elephant. And it is, Beliefer has an excellent product. Um, they're, they're a better known company, like they're uh, more well known. And they are excellent. They have great product. I highly recommend Beliefer. The Pink Elephant is a mixture of um, red and white which makes pink duh and so um, this is this is the only this is all I have from Beliefer I haven't tried uh, this is I haven't tried anything but their but a, the mixture so um, I won't be ordering any more Kratom for a while I mean I'm really good on Kratom so but I will definitely order from them again all right so the thing I want, I, I'm going to announce the winner to the Kratom contest at the end of this video. So please stick around and listen to the morning chat. P give my video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Okay, guys? Just click that little thumbs up button. It only takes one second. All right, so this morning I, for my morning chat, I want to talk about um, when someone's ready to get their lives turned around. Like, can we force someone into recovery, basically? And, you know, I've gone back and forth on my opinion of this, and I still don't know where I stand, but I, I needed to be done. Um, and I needed to go back out to do that. I'm not suggesting you guys do that. So it's really hard to talk about, you know, to say that because I don't want to, I don't want to say, oh, you've got to go back out in order to hit your bottom because that's not, that's not necessarily the case for everybody. Um, I'm stubborn. I was set in my ways. I was older. I was in my late forties and I was pretty sure that I was in control of everything and nobody could tell me nothing, okay? I didn't realize I was in the state I was in. I, st I was so delusional that I thought I had everything under control that, you know, um, and I even wasn't ready to admit I was an addict. Uh, I thought that, you know, since I still had an apartment and I still, you know, I, I still presented well, you know, um, that I, that I was all, I was good. And the, the delusion that I was in was just huge. And I, um, I remember the first time I thought about rehab, I was sitting on my couch. I had my computer in my lap. And I was watching Intervention. And something came over me and it was like, wow, you know what? I was, I was watching this heroin addict on there. And I saw myself for a second. For the first time. I'm just like this person and they need help. But when I thought about going into rehab, it was like, I'm going to do this on my own. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to go to rehab. There's no fucking way I'm going to rehab been there, done that. I fucking hate it. I'm too old. It's embarrassing. All this stuff. And so I tried a little controlled usage. I bought myself a bun, which is 10 bags, and said, I'm going to wean myself down and I'm going to quit heroin. <laughs> Guess what? I ended up doing the whole bun that day. There is no such thing as controlled heroin use. <laughs> just just, just kind of ridiculous <laughs> when I think back. And so 
when I finally did decide I was done, I was done. Like I quit and I started, you know, I went through withdrawal. I never, um, I never asked for drugs. I never, I, I mean, I was in withdrawal, complete and utter hell withdrawal, puking and shitting and kicking and There's, I mean, it's, there's no words to describe what real heroin withdrawal is. It's more than just some chills and a little nausea. That, that was what it was like when I was doing the pills. If I didn't have the pills, I was, I was sick. I mean, I was uncomfortable. I was nausea. I was, you know, sweating and, and that kind of thing. Nothing compared to the withdrawal I was in from putting 10 or more bags of heroin a day, plus the lot, it's into my body for a long period of time. My, when I stopped, my body went into fucking hell. Um, and so, I, but I, I knew that I wanted to stop. And, um, but when I went to, and I went into rehab and I went to the halfway house. But even in the halfway house, I couldn't admit I was an addict. A counselor would be like, he had me sit down and he's like, I want you to say my name's Avalon and I'm an addict. I wouldn't do it. The pride that I had, and that's what it was. For me to say those words, I'm an addict, was too much for me. Like, I couldn't do it. I was not ready. So after six months, I got thrown out of the halfway house and went back home and in two weeks I relapsed and was back into it and I died three times in five months and got my ass whipped by my addiction so there was no denying that I was an addict and I went back with a different attitude I went back knowing I was in fucking deep and I knew that I, I was completely fucked up in every way, shape, and form. My life was completely unmanageable in every way, shape, and form. I had the, I had the, mature, the emotional maturity, maturity of a 10-year-old. I knew, didn't know how to control my emotions. I didn't, I didn't know how to have any kind of healthy relationship. I couldn't control, I mean, I threw chairs, I slammed doors, I was just a mess without my solution, and my solution was drugs. That's how I controlled my emotions, that's how I dealt with life. And taking that away was, it left me in my original state, which was complete and utter madness. And so I spent a year in the halfway house learning how to live life again. Actually for the first time because I had never learned how to live life ever. I come out of an abusive situation where I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't raised. I wasn't taught how to live life. I wasn't taught life skills. And so I had to, I had to start all over. Excuse me. And, um, but until I saw that for myself, recovery wouldn't have worked. It didn't work. I couldn't still not see. That's why we have to admit we're powerless. Not just admit it, but see it. We have to, we have to see ourselves as, oh my God, this is bigger than I am. I cannot control this. So I need help. And so, um, you know, some people go to jail and that's what they need to change their life. Um, but a lot of people go to jail 
and still either are using in there, either they still cannot admit that they're powerless, they don't really want to change. Because I, I didn't ever want to think about life without using. Like, I just couldn't imagine what life would be like if I didn't have, wasn't able to put something in my body to change my reality, to change the uncomfortableness in my own skin. Um, I still sometimes get that uncomfortableness in my own skin that I, I this need this that will come over me that I oh I gotta I, I need to escape and so what I you know at those times I need to get my mind off that I need to you know talk to somebody I need to redirect myself I need to you know whatever but and so when we try to talk to somebody about changing when we when we say you know Okay, like you know, on um, on intervention, you know, they'll 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 give them bottom lines. Okay, if you if you don't stop, okay, you're get, we're not letting you live with us. We're not giving you money anymore. We're not blah blah blah. Um, it will have you arrested. Well, all this. I it does sometimes work, but if a, if if that person don't see themselves if that person isn't ready does is it really going to work long term you know so i you know to sit and preach to somebody is that really going to work i do think that it's important that we don't enable people I don't want to love someone to death. Are you kidding me? Ah, thought it was going to cut my video off. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, I, I don't want to enable somebody and give them a place to live, give them money, all that stuff. Um, but I can't force them to change. They have to. They have to want it for themselves. All right. And so, I mean, what are your what are your opinions? Do you think that do you think that sending somebody to jail, sending someone to rehab, giving them bottom lines, giving them uh, you know taking their free place to live away, all these different things that we we do, do you think that that works? And. Or do you think somebody needs, they just have to be ready? You know, I, I don't know what it takes for, for our, you know, each person's different. But, um, all right, so I'm going to uh, announce the winner. I'm going to open my little handy-dandy envelope here. Only four people wrote down numbers. So only four people entered the contest. And so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, please. Whoops. The number was or is 979. 979. And that means the winner is Jill Segworth. She guessed 762. And um, so, Jill, send me a message on Facebook, Avalon and Decker, so I can get your address and get this sent to you. And um, or email me, Avalon and Decker at Avalon and Decker7 at gmail.com. And give me your address, and I will get your winnings sent out to you. Thank you to everybody who entered. And so um, I hope that you all are having a good day. Brightest blessings and God is blessed.